Good morning. I'm Mike Piazza. I am the Dean of the Cathedral of Hope, United Church of Christ, and am President of Hope for Peace and Justice. I wear both of those hats, um, but I want to speak to you for just a moment wearing a third hat. I am actually also the father of two teenage daughters. I say that to earn your sympathy and uh, to, to talk about my perspective as seen through their eyes. They uh, accompanied us when we went five years ago to protest this war. And if you think about people who, have, who are 15 years old, one third of their life has been lived while this nation has been at war. That's their reality. A third of their life has been lived under war, a war they do not understand and a war which their father certainly cannot explain to them. And I am in deep despair of what has happened to our culture and is happening to our culture in this part of their life. I got on a plane on Monday, and while I realize what I'm about to say will not be universally popular, I just ask you to think with me about it. I was getting on the plane, and um, a couple of things happened. One was that uh, it was in Jacksonville, Florida, where there are a number of military bases, and someone on the plane, getting on the plane in front of me, was in camouflage uniform. I noticed as he, he was right in front of me in line with the uh, gate agent, and he was rather brusque and even abusive with her. And yet, he was seated in first class of that airplane upgraded for free. And as we took off, the pilot announced how glad they were to have him on board, and the airplane applauded. And I thought, what has come of our culture? That people who kill other people are our heroes. Now, I appreciate the kind words about courage and sacrifice for our soldiers. But it is, uh, the culture in which my daughters are growing up is in danger of glorifying war. Camouflage, clothing, sold everywhere, worn by everyone. I saw a camouflaged um, Easter basket recently. What is that about? And our heroes are our soldiers, not the people the police officers or firefighters or nurses who give so much of their lives and risk so much of their lives every day on the streets of Dallas. I wonder if our attitude about war, would this war would be different if we were drafting soldiers from every level of society rather than fighting this war with mercenaries, with people who willingly are paid to go and fight. I do not wish to villainize the soldiers who defend our country, but I do wish to call us to a new realization of what is going on here and what our culture is doing here. If every time you try to criticize this war, you have to parenthesize it with praising our brave soldiers. They are brave. And thank God there are women and men willing to defend this country. But right now, those are willing men willing and women willing to be paid to fight other people in an unjust war. And while I do not wish to castigate them, I do wish to call on them to ask if that is really where they want to spend their lives, how they want to risk their lives. We were taken into this war by three upper middle class white men who had never served in the military. The President, Vice President, and Secretary of Defense. What we need to be, what needs to happen now, is for people who do know the horrors of war, people who do care about the lives of every person on this planet, to begin to call us to value something different, to make heroes out of different people. We here in Dallas will soon experience the building of a half a billion dollar monument to these failed policies and this failed war on a university campus right here in our midst. We will be home to an institution that will for the rest of my daughter's life 
seek to justify these policies and cover up the fact that we have killed hundreds of thousands of innocent people. I accuse the, the media of being complicit with this administration, with this regime, in refusing to let us see the soldiers who have died, in not showing us the coffins, in not showing us the children blown apart in Iraq. We have not seen this war face to face, and that's because so much of our military, our, our media is owned by corporations that profit from the military industrial complex. We have been too polite about this. And we've got to rise up and say, no, if we are not the prophetic voices speaking out in anger, anger about what it is doing to our children, then we, were, we are co-conspirators. You know, in two weeks, this week is Holy Week, but in two weeks there is another anniversary. It is the anniversary of the 40th, it is the 40th anniversary of the martyrdom of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. You know, he was very popular in many circles until he raised his voice against the Vietnam War, and then he was no longer invited to the White House. We religious leaders, we who are spiritual leaders in our community, may not be as popular in Dallas, Texas, if we start speaking the truth. But if we do, do not, my daughters and your children and grandchildren will grow up in a culture that believes a lie, that believes that war can be done cheaply with few deaths, even 4,000 soldiers, that's relatively few casualties because we've never seen the probably nearly one million people who have died in Afghanistan and Iraq from our actions. They are just collateral damage. No, they are children of God. They are as precious to God as my daughters are to me. And we must do everything in our power to make their lives not have been given in vain. Not just our soldiers' lives, their lives. We must fight as hard for peace as the military and gut industrial complex invests in war. And we must call out those who are their co-conspirators and ask them with us to repent. Thank you.